Hello and welcome to the part 15 of my 2024 F1 season simulation. If you missed the last part, part 14, that was the Belgian Grand Prix. Make sure to check that one out as uh, it wasn't as interesting as the parts before, but it was it, it was crucial for context for the Grand Prix, especially. Uh, here we are for the round 15 Dutch Grand Prix, uh, the first race after the summer break. Um, pretty much the... Yeah, we're getting to the last part of the season. Pretty much what we have is like nine la last nine races. If I, I actually it's actually I think it's ten because we have twenty four race calendar. So this is the last ten races of the season, which means after this race is only nine races. Uh, yeah, I get my point. Anyways, uh, in terms of weather for this weekend, uh, I was actually very surprised because I expected Dutch Grand Prix to bring some weather. Uh, weather aspect into it, but it looks like completely dry for the entire weekend, which, uh, I mean, who knows, uh, probably the, the weather, uh, wet weather would probably help Max win even more dominantly, so let's hope for some interesting battles up in the front of the field, at least. Um, yeah, let's get into the upgrades. There aren't many upgrades for this first Grand Prix, which is, which is weird, as the first race after the summer break, you would expect most upgrades to be brought here but instead it's just a small couple of small updates for a couple of teams uh no big upgrades this time so yeah let's see that grand prix q1 uh i mean who knows maybe we can see some challenge for red bull cards and special max or stuff but uh um, I don't know if I should be hopeful or not at this point. Q1 is Max Verstappen topping Q1 by over three and a half tenths of a second. I had the Fernando Lozano P2, PS3 P3, Gasly P4, Perez P5, uh, Hamilton P6, Noda P7, Russell P8, Ricardo P9, and Lance Stroll running out the top 10. And as the two Ferraris of Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz in P11, P12, P13, Ocon, P14, Norris, P15, Sargent provisionally out in Q1 are Lux Albon. Uh, Valtteri Bottas, Gwenyo Zhou, Kevin Magnussen, and Nico Hulkenberg with no time set. That's because uh, Nico Hulkenberg had the driver error, which caused him to crash and bring, brought out, he brought out a red flag, which hampered a lot of drivers' lap times uh, quite a bit, uh, most notably Norris and the Ferraris, which uh, you would expect them to be higher up the field. So yeah, this is this session is not very representative, but we already see the gap that Max has to the rest of the field. And you have to remember, this is the Dutch Grand Prix. It's like the one of the shortest tracks on the calendar and one of the shortest tracks in terms of lap time uh, as well. Uh, having this big of a gap is it, is scary in Q1, definitely. Um, very unfortunate for Haas so far. I mean, Olkenberg crashing out and Magnussen getting last because of it as well. Yeah, uh, has bringing upgrades and was was it Hungary? Uh, looks like they still have a long way to go. Uh, let's see if there are any changes for the final classification. As there are two notable changes. Uh, first off, Checo Perez gets his lap time lead, as well as Lance Stroll. Both drop a couple of positions, not like they are out in Q1. So officially out in Q1 in the Dutch Grand Prix are Alex Albon out qualified by Logan Sargent by. Two hundred of a second. Uh, Valtteri Bottas, Quentin Jerome, Kevin Magnussen, and Nico Hulkenberg in P20. So let's see Q2 as we have Fernando Alonso topping the session ahead of Lando Norris. Well, that's more like it. That's more exciting. Max Verstappen in P3, Oscar Piastri P4, George Russell P5, Charles Leclerc P6, Jacob Perez in P7, uh, Lewis Hamilton in P8, Carlos Sainz in P9, and Daniel Ricciardo uh, in the final. Final position getting into Q3 provisionally. Um, out in Q2 provisionally are last Stroll in P11, and it's Gasly in P12, or Tsunoda in P13, Logan Session in P14, and Esteban Ocon in P15. So yeah, um, Q1 was pretty pretty wild, pretty crazy. So let's see if there are any changes this time. As we see, there are no changes in the final classifications for Q2. So the drivers officially out in Q2 are last Stroll, Peter Gasly, Yuki Tsunoda, Logan Sargent, and Esteban Ocon. So, let's see Q3 and who's in pole position for the Dutch Grand Prix. As we have Max Verstappen topping Q3 provisionally on provisional pole position. I have Oscar Piastri in P2, uh, Lennon Norris P3, Charles Leclerc P4, 
Alonso P5, Perez P6, uh, Carlos Sainz P7, then Ricardo P8, Lewis Hamilton P9, and George Russell in P10. Uh, P10 for George Russell without a time set. That's because of an engine failure for him in qualifying, unfortunately. Uh, Luckily for others, though, it didn't bring out any interruptions to this session, so it went smoothly uh, to an extent. So these are fairly representative lap times uh, from the drivers. Uh, yeah, let's see if there are any changes for the final classification. As we can see, there are no changes. So uh, yeah, this is the final Q3 classification. Let's recap the starting grid for Dutch Grand Prix. As well, Max Verstappen lining up on pole position for his home race in 2024 again uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, head of Oscar Piastri in P2. The rest of the grid is Norris and P3, Charles Leclerc P4, P5 for Alonso, P6 for Perez, P7 for Sainz, P8 for Ricardo, P9 for Hamilton, and P10 for George Russell. Starting just outside the top 10 is Lance Stroll in P11, Pierre Gasly P12, Lucas Sonoda in P13. Logan Sargent P14, Esteban Ocon P15, P16 for Alex Albon, P17 and P18 for the Sabbath drivers of Bottas and Joe, and the last but not least are Haas drivers of Magnussen and Hulkenberg, starting in P19 and P20 respectively. So, that was the starting grid. Let's see what will the race bring us today. As we see Lando Norris winning the Dutch Grand Prix, head of Carlos Sainz, and Oscar Priestry rounding up the podium and P3. I'm pretty sure you didn't expect this. <laughs> and I honestly didn't expect it either, but I was simulating and I was like, what? Uh, let me quickly explain, explain what happened before we move uh, to the rest of the standings, uh, or sort of, sort of results, I should say. Uh, first interruption to the session was a safety car brought up by Max Verstappen, who had an engine failure uh, from the lead. Uh, which would, I mean, a lot of people would be excited uh, about this pod in reality. Obviously, very unfortunate for Max. Uh, so he DNF'd out of his home Grand Prix, uh, but this gives a lot of opportunities to other drivers, especially the McLarens, who are uh, trying to catch Red Bull in the constructors. Um, the second safety, safety car was by uh, a crash between Alex Albon and Valtteri Bottas which was uh, more on Alex Albon's fault, which means that Alex Albon receives a free place grid penalty for the next race, uh, which is the Italian Grand Prix, which is, I mean, not the best place to have a grid penalty, because uh, even though it has a long, very long streets, and it's very much straight line speed, which is good for Williams, uh, Williams isn't really good at overtaking, and uh, Monza is generally not a good track for overtaking because every every car is running a uh, very low down for setup uh, anyway let's recap the race results Lionel Norris wins the Dutch Grand Prix with the fastest lap from P2 on the grid 26 points for him and it's Carlos Sainz in P2 making up five positions uh, very good drive from the Spaniard uh, P3 for Oscar Piastri dropping one place but still on the podium very good drive P4 for Fernando Alonso making up one place Good recovery, I guess, uh, damage limitations. I mean, the the World Drivers Championship fight is probably already settled, but this gives us a little bit of hope, I guess, uh, even though probably not. P5 for Lewis Hamilton making up four places, uh, good recovery as well. Uh, finally beating his teammate uh, quite convincingly by three positions. P6 for Checo Perez, uh, the lone Red Bull in this race, uh, finished in P6. Yeah, um, considering where Max was and how dominant Max looked uh, for the entire weekend, pretty much uh, pretty underwhelming result from Checo. P7 for Charles Leclerc, dropping three places, but that's mostly due to the safety car itself. P8 for George Russell, making up two places. P9 for Daniel Ricciardo, uh, dropping one place, but still uh, two points for the Racing Wolves team. Very good for Ricciardo. And P10 for Logan Sargent. Uh, making up four places to score. Another point for Williams. Uh, Logan Sargent seems to finally find his form in the Williams car. And when Albon has an off weekend, Sargent is there to pick up the points, which is very good for Williams. 
as they seem to have finally have two capable drivers uh, in the lineup. P11 for last stroll, just outside the points. I'm pretty sure he would be very upset with it. Uh, P12 for Nico Hulkenberg, making up eight places. That has, has, has potential. It definitely has potential. It was very, very sad that we saw Hulkenberg crash in uh, Q1, unfortunately. P13 for Pierre Gasly, seems like the Alpine didn't really suit this, this track. P14 for Sonoda, yeah, outperformed by Ricardo. For the entire weekend, pretty much, and P15 for the other Alpine of Esteban Ocon. P16 of, for Kevin Magnussen making our four places, that is, but that's mostly due to the DNFs, and the only driver he overtook technically is Guanajou, who finished in P17 and is the last of the finishing drivers. Uh, DNFs are obviously Max Verstappen, Alex Albon, and Valtteri Bottas. Very unfortunate weekend for Valtteri, who DNF. Due to no no fall, always say on pretty much, um, yeah. This was this these were the race results, and even though it doesn't really change the road drive championship this much, uh, it could change constructors. And let me tell you, it, it can be very close, as we can see later on. Let's see the road drive championship uh, updated after round fifteen. Uh, this time it's fixed uh, as well as the constructors, so there should be no issues. 244 points for Max Verstappen leading the championship by 50 points ahead of Fernando Alonso. Uh, three victories, nine podiums, seven pole positions, and eight fastest laps. Uh, yeah, very consistent throughout the entire season. Max was uh, with most pole positions, so it looks like the Red Bull is is the opposite of last year. Pretty much, the Red Bull last year was like insanely quick in the races and in in the, in the qualifying, it was like. The other the, the other cars and the other teams could challenge Red Bull, but here uh, it seems like Red Bull is more dominant in qualifying than in the races, which is weird. But I mean, uh, you never know. Maybe the RB twenty, I think it is, could be behaved as well this way. You never know. B two for Fernando Alonso so far not one hundred ninety four points, three victory, six podiums, three poles, and two fastest laps. Uh, 12 points for him from this race. Good, looking good for Fernando in the P P2 in the championship, but I mean, the driver's championship is a bit far away. 50 points and with nine races to go, I don't really feel like this is doable, but I mean, you never know. We just saw Max Verstappen the anything from the race. Uh, anything can happen. I don't want to rule anything out. It just looks like uh, it's pretty much the fourth consecutive title for Max Verstappen at this point. Uh, but Lionel Norris is a huge surprise uh, in this middle part of the season as he starts climbing up the World Draft Championship. He was pretty much like outside the top 10 at one point and now he's in P3 with another victory for McLaren. Three victories now for Lionel Norris. Five podiums, two poles and a fastest lap. Charles Leclerc drops to P4, but still very good uh, position for him. 117 points, two, two victories, three podiums, and three fastest laps. As we have Oscar Priestri with a podium uh, in P5, 167 points, two victories, five podiums, two poles, and the fastest lap. And we have George Russell in P6, uh, four points from four P8 uh, in this race, 134 points, a victory, and six podiums. Uh, so far this season for him. P7 for Carl Sainz, making up two places thanks to that P2 in Zandvoort. 115 points now, a victory, four podiums. Uh, having four podiums at Leclerc is interesting, and a pole position, which is also interesting that it's the only Ferrari driver with a pole position so far in the simulation. Uh, yeah, uh, P8 for Checo Perez, who drops one place behind Carl Sainz, but it's very, very close between the, those three drivers. Uh, yeah, no victories so far, only three podiums for Checo. A very, very sad season, uh, pretty much where he left off last season. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much the last season, but the Red Bull is not as dominant, which is probably what most people think like this season would, would go, uh, unless Red Bull is even more dominant than last year. And I really, really, really hope that's not the case. P9 for Lewis Hamilton so far. Uh, dropping on place, but it was a good result from him. Uh, now only 22 points behind his teammate, which still looks not good, but yeah, this is more due to the Mercedes not really being quick 
in the past few races where Hamilton has been the stronger driver. Um, Jeremy Tree and only one put into his name, but that consistency is there. P10 for Lanstro, so so far still on 69 points. Uh, that's a nice number, but uh, the position isn't nice compared to Fernando Alonso, who has way, way, way more points and generally more contribution to constructors uh, for Aston Martin. Two points for Lanstro. P11 for Ricky Sonoda on 40 points pretty much since like, I don't know, like four, like seven races in a row. It's like at the same points. I don't, I don't remember the last time you kicked his points at this point. Uh, yeah, no, that's it for Sonoda P12 for Pierre Gasly, 24 points. P13 just behind him, one point behind his Esteban Ocon on 23 points. P14 for Alex Albon on 19 points and a one podium from Saudi Arabia. As we have uh, Daniel Ricciardo scoring two points, but still only P15 in the championship. Still a long way behind Sonoda. And even though he's been doing really well in the last few races, it's still uh, a very, very, very big gap to those up ahead of him. Uh, P16 for uh, Valtteri Bottas, no changes there. P17 for Logan Sargent, tight on points with Valtteri Bottas, but unfortunately Bottas uh, wins on count back as has the P8 from Imola, which puts him above Sargent's four, I, I think that was four, or maybe three uh, scoring, well, Point scoring positions. I am not really sure if the Sasha scored on three occasions or four occasions. It's definitely three or more. Uh, three or four, basically. Uh, anyways, uh, let's see the rest. Holcomb ring B18 on two points. Yeah, no changes there. And the last uh, two finishing, last two drivers in the Rojava Championship without any points so far. Joe and Magnussen and P19 and P20. Let's see constructors, which is way more interesting. And let me tell you, this fight is going on. First is Red Bull, still leading the way, but only eight points ahead of McLaren. Uh, Red Bull has 357 points, three victories, 12 podiums, seven poles, and eight fastest laps. And now McLaren, thanks to that double podium and a victory from Zandvoort, thanks to Max Verstappen's DNF. Five victories, 394 points, 10 podiums, four pole positions, and two fastest laps. Looking, it's looking very good for McLaren. Technically, if they keep can keep this momentum and score consistent podiums while Checo Perez is not up there with Max Verstappen, they could really challenge for uh, for the constructors uh, with Red Bull. Obviously, the other three teams look like they're out of constructors at this point. Prior MP3. 285 points, three victories, seven podiums, a pole position, and three passes laps. Uh, 24 points for Ferrari. Already we can, or already we can, nothing to brag about, or nothing to worry about. Uh, P4 for Aston Martin, 263 points, three victories, eight podiums, three pole positions, and two fastest laps so far. As we have Mercedes in P5 on 246 points, a victory, and seven podiums. Then we have a racing Bulls team. Which finally scored points uh, over Alpine. Uh, still in P6 though, 62 points. Alpine in P7, 47 points. Dennis Williams in P8, uh, scoring one point in this race on 23 points now. And of that one podium from Saudi Arabia. As we have Sauber in P9, and uh, Haas in that last on tw two points in P10. Yeah. Constructors, pretty much no changes uh, in the bottom six. Uh, the also oh, bottom five in terms of like positions, but the, the top the top five is interesting. There's the battle for the constructors championship as it looks like, and there's the battle for P3 in the constructors as well. I wouldn't really count out Mercedes just yet. They they had a really strong part of the season uh, where they even won a race and had very good results. Very was very consistent. I, I still believe Mercedes can turn things around and just have a couple of good races in a row. Uh, this race was all right for them, not not great, because McLaren uh, was pretty much a, lot, uh, a much better team and for our score points over them, but at least they scored points over Aston Martin. Yeah, next up is the Italian Grand Prix. It's more the time for Ferrari fans. Uh, yeah, this is this could, could be interesting as uh, this is purely straight line speed track. Um, you know which car is the strongest straight line speed car in terms of uh, in terms of on paper? It's Ferrari, 
And second is Williams. Uh, these this two teams may may surprise you this weekend, so make sure to uh, look forward to that. Uh, Italian Grand Prix should come out tomorrow around the same time as this video comes out today as I'm recording this uh, on the time of upload. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, like the video and comment down below what you want to see me, uh, what you want to see from me uh, in terms of F1 content and other content perhaps as well. Uh, so yeah, Italian Grand Prix tomorrow and up until next time, see ya.